Welcome to this video tutorial on deploying Tanzu Kubernetes Grid on VMware Cloud on AWS. Over the next 10 minutes, we'll deploy a Tanzu Kubernetes Grid management cluster, and then deploy our first workload cluster, commonly referred to as a Tanzu Kubernetes cluster. Before you can perform the deployment, you'll need to have downloaded the Tanzu CLI from the VMware Downloads page and placed it in your system path. You'll also need to have Docker Desktop installed so that you can bootstrap the management cluster. Let's dive in by first explaining this bootstrap process. When you deploy the management cluster, TKG starts by deploying a small Kubernetes cluster on your workstation. This is done by using a tool called KIND, which stands for Kubernetes in Docker. What happens is that a Kubernetes cluster is deployed on the local workstation inside of Docker containers. The cluster API resources are then deployed into this temporary cluster and they have the logic to deploy your management cluster on whichever cloud infrastructure you've selected. Once the management cluster is deployed, these containers are moved to the management cluster and the local workstation cluster is removed. This process is sometimes called a pivot. Once complete, further instructions are sent directly to the management cluster for the creation, scaling, and deletion of the Tanzu Kubernetes clusters. Let's try this out for ourselves. To start, I've got my VMware Cloud on AWS environment deployed, and I've opened some firewall rules for accessing vCenter. To begin, we'll run the Tanzu Management Cluster Create command, and I'll add the UI switch. If you have a configuration file created, the UI is not needed, but for a first-time deployment, the user interface is really helpful. Once you run that command, your web browser will open a web page hosted on the local workstation to fill out the rest of the details. We start by selecting a cloud provider. Tanzu Kubernetes Grid is VMware's multi-cloud solution, so this product can be deployed on different cloud vendors. In this case, we're going to pick vSphere. Depending on what cloud you pick, you'll have different requirements for data entry here. Now we'll fill out the vCenter FQDN username and password. When we're done with this, we'll click the Connect button, which allows the Tanzu installer to query the cloud endpoint for additional objects. For example, after a successful connection, you can now select our desired data center from the drop-down box. After this, provide a public SSH key so that we get access to the Kubernetes nodes for troubleshooting and things down the road. On the next screen, we need to pick a deployment type. There are two main options. The difference between them comes down to availability and sizing. A production deployment consists of three control plane nodes for availability while a development plan has a single control plane node and is a single point of failure. Then pick an instance type which defines the size for your nodes. You'll do this for both control plane nodes and worker nodes. Select the deployment type and then give the cluster a name. The control plane endpoint acts as the load balancer address for communication. Enter an unused IP address that the nodes will be able to access. Machine health checks are a way to ensure that nodes are healthy we recommend leaving this enabled. The next screen is optional. If you've purchased the NSX Advanced Load Balancer, you'll be able to configure it for use with your Tanzu clusters. We'll skip this in our demo. Now we have an opportunity to add some metadata about our clusters. You can enter a location, a description, and some tags. I found that adding tags is a good way to get information about a cluster's purpose, so don't neglect doing this step it will help you keep track of things. Next, we select where our clusters will live in our cloud environment. In this case, we select a virtual machine folder, a data store for our disks, and a cluster or resource pool for our virtual machines. Now on to the networking section. Select the VM port group where the VMs will attach to your network. You can optionally change the cluster service cider and pod ciders if you'd like. Proxy settings can also be enabled here if your environment requires the use of web proxies. In this demo, I'm not setting up any identity management solutions for authentication, but you have the ability to connect your clusters to an OIDC or LDAP resource for your users. Now select the OS image that will be used for your Kubernetes nodes. These images can be downloaded from the VMware Downloads page and come in different versions and operating systems. 
you'll need to have the image downloaded and deployed as a template in your vSphere environment before continuing with this step. The next screen is also optional, but highly recommended. If you are entitled to Tanzu Mission Control, obtain a registration URL from TMC and place it in the box. This step will automate the connection between this new management cluster and Tanzu Mission Control. On the final screen, you have the opportunity to participate in the Customer Experience and Improvement Program to help VMware make their products even better in the future. Lastly, review your settings to make sure they are accurate. And then I recommend copying the CLI command equivalent. The next time you do this process, you could run this simple one-liner to repeat the process. Click the Deploy Management Cluster button to begin the deployment. Once the deployment has started, you can review the progress from the UI or through the command line window you use to start this process. I've sped up the video so that we aren't waiting for this to complete. Now that the deployment has finished, we can see that in our VMware Cloud on AWS environment, we have three new control plane nodes and a worker node for our new management cluster. Now it's time to begin deploying our first Tanzu Kubernetes cluster for our workloads. To do this, we're going to borrow that config file we used from our management cluster deployment. You remember that one-liner? We can copy and then edit that config file for the use with additional clusters. In my case, I've updated the cluster endpoint address and cluster name. Then, when we have our config file ready to go, all we need to do is run tanzu cluster create dash f and specify our config file. Our new tanzu Kubernetes cluster should begin building. I've sped up the video again here, but when done, we can verify that there are new VMs created and we can use Kubernetes to display our nodes. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you want to know more, please check out the content on vmc.techzone.vmware.com. And if you're looking for Kubernetes education, don't forget about kubeacademy.com. Thanks for watching.